everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, I guess if you've been watching since the opening went on, as I was doing in the studio on the monitor, we are watching the the descent, in a sense, into Earth. And, and you saw the beautiful blue glow planet Earth. And then you think so much of what we as humans do on this planet. I mean, this week uh, there was some sort of uranium leak and, and people were seriously injured, if not killed, and, and areas for miles and miles around where that leak took place had to be evacuated. And it just seems like it, it, it's, it's such a necessary time and such a necessary intention for us is to come into a healing and to come into a consciousness of, of treasuring the incredible planet we live on and, and each, each of the inhabitants on the planet, including all the humans, the animals, the trees. And we talk about this all the time. And tonight, once again, we have people with us as guests, as honored guests, who, whose lives are dedicated to the healing practice, to heal the, the mind, the body, the spirit, and in essence, the earth itself. We have Stephen Lewis and Evan Slauson, who have written this extraordinary uh, new book together, Sanctuary, the Path to Consciousness. And in that, it, it describes the healing modalities, the healing techniques the, uh, of energetic balancing, of, of, of a, of, of a process in a sense called quantum consciousness where that energy balancing of, of each human being can spread one by one by one and then the earth will be healed where we, we won't have these uranium leaks we won't have to evacuate this planet and it's really time that our intention came into that and we also have with us someone who does it in a, in a different way through her music, Saffron Aubois, who plays a, an incredible saxophone. She has a new album out called Saffron. She's uh, played at the recent uh, Playboy f Jazz Festival. She was a big hit there. There was an article in the LA Times about her. And she's playing all over in all the different jazz festivals around the country now. And playing with her are some people who've been with us before who we just are so honored to have back with us. We have Sudama back with us. And we have uh, T.B. Litke back with us. And we also have D.C. Stringer, who is a, a new guest to Bridging Heaven and Earth. But I've heard him chant and play uh, before the show during the sound check. And he's just an extraordinary musician. And their music is again in that healing mode. So please let this this night be a healing for us all. So as we normally do at this time, please join me in a short meditation and then we'll get on to this extraordinary show. Let, let the healing begin. Thank you. So we're going to st uh, start tonight's show with uh, Saffron uh, and the band uh, uh, T.B. Litke, Sudama, and D.C. Stringer uh, playing an improvisational piece. So whenever they're ready.
thank you. That was beautiful. So we're on the set with Stephen, uh, closest to me, and Evan uh, further away. So welcome. Thank you for having us here. So how did you get involved? I think you you started, and then Evan came in a little after. How did you get involved with the energetic balancing and, and the healing process that way? Well, I, I think I was uh, born the right time for that. I have always been interested in energy. I uh, started with Wilhelm Reich, and then I became interested in Eastern philosophy, religion, medicine. It's all in the package. Right. And at the same time, the explosions were taking place in quantum physics. And it became clear that everything every spiritual leader had always said was obviously not mythology, but pragmatic, practical truth, real. We, life, is nothing but energy. We see matter and call it something different, it's crystallized energy. And then the converse became clear to me that consciousness is simply a more subtle form of energy. And from there my work began, it's never going to end. It can. Right. And how did you come into this work, Evan? Well, I first came to uh, Steve um, out of desperation. I was looking for someone that might be able to help me uh, with, with, my physical, own he with my own yeah. healing, right? I like to uh, to say that, you know, there's that, that Henny Youngman joke about if I'd known I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. <laughs> and and, and uh, in my teens, I heard that and realized everyone in my family lives into their 90s. So for me, it wasn't a joke, it was a warning. So I started taking good care of myself. But and it worked really good. I was doing yoga and I was meditating and being a vegetarian and doing all this stuff. And it worked really great till about 10 years ago in my mid 30s, uh, where I just started falling apart and I was tired all the time. I was aging before my eyes. I looked 10 years older then than I do today. Um, basically, the whole plan was coming apart, which was pretty freaky because I had nowhere to turn. I had given up on doctors many, many years earlier, and I really didn't believe there was going to be any solution, anyone who could help me out, because I had always figured you maintain yourself, and that's the trick, but it wasn't working. It wasn't working. Uh, a friend of mine was always taking these drops and talking about this guy that he could, that could deal with anything. I thought he was some kind of an allergy doctor. I had no idea what I was getting involved in. I call up for an appointment. At the time, there was about a two-year waiting list, but I called regularly after I got my appointment and uh, managed to get in after about eight months because... You told you were aging fast. Well, was, I did try. I tried that. <laughs> I tried, I tried, I tried that, but they didn't care. But it turned out because I, was lo because I was local, because I was local, I was able to get in. And, and somebody and, canceled? And, or? Yeah, exactly, or right. whatever it was. And... Um, we sat down and I wrote my list of complaints out dutifully at the time. And by the way, at the time it required a referral only. It was a that long waiting list, but you had to know somebody who would say, yeah, take this guy, he's okay, or you weren't in. Basically, if you just heard about him and you called up, there was you were not in the door at all. Okay, so I, uh, I go in there, I write down my list of, of current complaints. We don't ask for that anymore. And he ignores them completely. He starts doing this testing process where you hold something in one hand and he starts pressing a probe against the other thumb and all this information is going by on the computer. And, and he starts telling me about stuff that had happened 20 years earlier, various things that had gone wrong 20 years earlier that I'd really, that they were part of why I'd given up on doctors because doctors weren't able to make any progress against those things. And I hadn't told him. And even the person who introduced me had no idea because I wasn't complaining about him. I figured it was useless. And you had enough present complaints that you didn't I had. An, well, I, I didn't think I wasn't even thinking that they were linked. But basically, right. it ended up turning out that they right. were completely linked. And the fact that he could tell me all that stuff would have been a really great parlor trick, basically. Except for that, in addition to which, he gave me these drops that were at I now know had, were infused with energies. And I took those drops, and within a few weeks, all of those things were gone. So, uh, and then there was plenty more to continue dealing with, and eventually I, I got involved because I have a lot of technology skills, and so I was able to contribute in a small way to the work that Steve originated. So, so why don't you describe the work and how, how it, you know, deals with the human form? Well, what it is really is the, the, the spiritual technology of healing. It 
is a way of let me back off and, and, and try and describe it this way. A doctor may diagnose or treat a disease, or he, he may succeed, he may fail. He does not heal. There is only one person in the world who can heal. And that one person can only heal one person, that is obviously you. That doesn't denigrate healers. A healer is someone who can point you push you, prod you, kick you, do whatever it takes to force you to heal yourself. And there is a spirit, there is a technology to that. And therefore healers have a function. What I did was, I've had a series of discoveries and, and revelations, wherein I figured out a way to measure the frequency of anything on earth. Once you can measure and store a frequency, you can change it, because all is energy, and I say you can change it. Um, I can help you, without a doubt. What frequencies do you change? What, do you, what are imbalances? What's wrong? How do you know which frequency is a balanced frequency for the kidney or the liver? How did, that, how did you come to that? That is what I figured out. That is the algorithm that's, well, essentially the heart of our system. Um, so once you know what harmony is, then you can see what disharmony is. If I check you and find you have the frequency of cancer, HIV. Which, well, I won't say my parents watch the show, so I, I, won't, I won't say it anymore. For HIV, now. whatever. Right. If you have that frequency and we take something unique to you, which is an extension of the holographic uh, principle, you're probably familiar with that, right? Anything well, why don't you describe it? Assume that there are, you know, in the millions of people who watch it, there might be a few people who aren't. Well, any with part it. of the hologram contains every bit of information about the entire hologram. So every atom has everything in it, in a sense. Everything about you. Right, exactly. I mean, there's a sheep named Dolly for just that reason. Right. Okay? Theoretically, you can, take, right. you can take a strand of wool and make a sheep because that information in that strand of wool contains all the information about Dolly's liver, heart, lungs, spirit, soul, mind. The same is true of anything unique to you, your hair, your photograph. Your photograph has a frequency that's entirely unique to you. If that photograph is subjected to frequencies that balance whatever imbalances you may have. And you know what they are. You will select them. I may check and find them. I may miss one. You will miss nothing because you definitely know. You know everything about yourself. You will remove those frequencies rapidly. And, and what, what that'll do is bring you into harmony. Yes, harmony is the flow of your life force, your energy. Right. Imbalances such as cancer, anxiety, whatever it may be. Disease. Disease. Interfere with that flow. You can change that completely. It's interesting when I see your photograph, you know, we've heard of primitive people who uh, refuse to let their pictures be taken because they believe it captures something of them. And you know, we may have kind of uh, laughed at their superstition. I believe that they intuitively live with a quantum consciousness and we have relied on treatment. We've relied on a type of technology that's divorced us from that side of our spirituality. And it's time for us to take back our power because what is happening in the world right now can only be dealt with by healing, not by treating. And you've got to do it yourself. Do you need help? I do. You may. But only you can do it. And you can do anything you want. We like because to, it's all energy. Everything is energy. We like to say that, that if, if we loan you the tools to fix your car and you fix your car, you can't say that we fixed it. Right? We just loaned you the tools. Well, that's all this is. This is a process of loaning you some tools that you don't otherwise have. He likes to say that. I don't know. 
Right. What do you like to say? <laughs> How do you like to say it? No, I'm just being facetious. No, I understand. Yeah. So, okay. So, which tools would you say, meta you know, to to extend the metaphor, if we might, <laughs> three people would know that word. But uh, to extend that, what are the tools that that you know you and Stephen offer with the with the energetic balancing technique? How would you? They're techniques of increasing consciousness by applying these energies to your photograph wherever you are in the world and maybe elsewhere we haven't had an opportunity to test and verify elsewhere but uh, you receive the energies and you make the necessary shifts in your consciousness and the flow of your life force um, explain that process for somebody who would not be familiar with it okay now let's go through the process somebody in the audience thinks you know, I could use a healing. <laughs> so they contact you through me, and then they call up and they find there's a 12 year wait unless you whine to get in trouble. And you live in LA. Okay, but soon they could get in somewhere along the Or now you've taught other people to do this process. Yes, I have. Right. Yes. So there are people around and you could put them on to people. Well, now, how, explain the process. Well, understand working. something that, as Evan mentioned about distance being irrelevant, that is certainly part and parcel of quantum physics because energy has no limitation of time and space that is the essence of a wave and we are all connected to that wave form and uh, Niels Bohr says when something becomes conscious it becomes particulate a particle there is no frequency you will not change if you are forced to focus on now people that's why I said people think some say they can do it themselves and they may I don't believe if you have the frequency of liver cancer or HIV or whatever your imbalance may be you're going to do a thing by focusing on your third eye and you may have a dozen imbalances and you can focus on all of them simultaneously. Are there people who can do it themselves without any kind of kick or nudge or boost? Perhaps. I'm not one. You may be. But you will focus on everything and you will heal every single thing about yourself. Your life force will shoot up astronomically. Everything about you that's wrong will be corrected. And you will do it. And that's what we need to do. Okay, but still, now, so how would the process take place? I contact you people. You contact say, us, we, and, uh, and so what would the give us your permission, be? and right. we take your photograph, or you so send us in. So we would send a photograph. You send a photograph in. I've never yeah. met most of my clients. They're all, right. they're all over the world. Um, and we then measure to see if you have sufficient life force to balance your imbalances. If you do, we will put you on the tray and you will do so. We will check to make sure. If you don't, we'll still put you on the tray. This, the difference is we, we, we don't charge you if we feel we're not certain you'll respond. And if you, because so when, there are and people and who are not on ineligible the, putting on the tray now, means your photo. It means the tray is a series of metal plates that are attached by a bunch of wires and gizmos and computers and these gizmos and computers basically put out these energies and a different vib vibration many rate. thousands of different balancing energies. and you can set that by well, a computer that's, program or basically that's what we do is right. we put out all of these balancing energies and so it really doesn't matter which imbalances you have it used to be that it mattered because we had to set up a machine just for you well we don't do that anymore we've now we're now capable of delivering all of the balancing energies all the time so basically we just put your picture on this equipment basically it sits with a photograph against these plates and there's a series of them etc cetera, etc cetera, a bunch of technical details so can you stack them up I mean no the, you play, the pictures no. must be directly in contact with the plate I see so there's one picture one plate well no not that either there's the plates are large and there's many pictures on a plate so oh I see what you're saying yeah. Because right. small picture, big plate. <laughs> right. I, and the results have been unbelievable. We've well, seen the endorsements in the book, I believe. 
Right. There's a lot of famous people who've put their names on, on the cover of our book. Um, and we could have had thousands of people. They wouldn't have had to be very small type if they were going to fit on the cover of the book. And no one would have known but, them but if, except if no their one, relatives. Right, exactly. So the thing is, it wouldn't have been a very good public testimony. But the fact that some famous people like Courtney Cox and Burt Bacharach and Linda Gray and John Roger and, um, you know, whoever else that's on the cover of the book there, uh, um, those people were this really... This is the book, Sanctuary, the Path to Consciousness. Our book, yes. And, okay, now, now you say, you talk about that as the path to consciousness. Now, how do you make the leap from physical health to consciousness? How does that, how do you, how do you see that working? Consciousness is probably the most inadequate word in the language. Uh, That's why I use this. <laughs> to no, in, in, in that, you know, the Eskimos have 50 words for snow. Right. What does conscious mean? Does it mean you were out cold and you came to? You were sleeping and you woke up? Or does it mean you are quantumly aware of you in relation to the universe? Or does it mean you're aware of the entire universe? That's why it's such an inadequate word. As you cause your life force to flow and remove imbalances, your consciousness increases because that is exactly what the object of your life force is. That to be in harmony. To be in harmony, yes. And that is consciousness. And harmony is all-knowing. That's why I said, there is nothing about you you don't know. But what does know mean? You may not be able to articulate it. I, I check people who, uh, I say, Let, what are your hereditary imbalances? And they go, I don't know, I was adopted. And of course they know every single thing about themselves. They know everything about their parents, their grandparents, and so on and so on. They know these things. Can they speak you of them, know. articulate them? No, but do they know? The degree to you which you bring it to the surface, or well, what does don't consciousness know conscious. mean? That's the degree to which you can bring it to the surface and talk about it right. is the degree of consciousness mm -hmm. you have about something, which you still know. Mm -hmm. You still know. Because it's part of... What you're, it's part of, say, your DNA. You know everything about you. When I check you, whatever I find is in you, you do know it. I can measure it and tell you. You may say, oh, I didn't know that, but of course you did. So that's what consciousness means. It's kind of an oblique answer, I understand, but... Mm -hmm. This is as good as I can do. Now, you know, I mean, we've done a lot of shows. This is probably, uh, you know, the 80, somewhere between 85 and 90. So we've had a lot of you know, healers and teachers. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, and, and my experience has been that when a human being experiences consciousness or experiences harmony, it feels like love in a human body. That's, and that's another word that the Indians have 312 words for, and we have one that you know, we, barely, we use all the uh, time. It doesn't make a lick of sense most of the time. You know, if it means selflessness, then probably very few of us are capable of it. So, I mean, is that some part of your experience, that when people have more harmony and have more balance? I, I don't know if I would use the word love, Alan. I would use something that may not have a single word. I would speak of being connected to a broader and broader and greater universe. And that's why in quantum physics, um, well, in the old days, Newtonian scientists stood apart from spiritual leaders. The church and science were opposed. With quantum physics, Einstein became the close, close friend of Schweitzer, uh, Krishnamurti and, and David Bohm, because they were dealing with the same thing. I believe with increased consciousness, you become more connected to the universe. How new is the concept of no man is an island? Pretty old. Pretty old. Yes. Whether that is love, I don't know if I, if, if I can say yes or no. But you are more part of the universe, and it is more part of you. How would you describe it, Alan? 
I'm willing to go with what Steve said this here. I mean, right. it, it's, yeah, it's, we're talking okay. about uh, one of the most important shamanic visions of, of of this century. We're talking about Einstein's special theory of relativity, which is uh, usually summarized as E equals M C squared, right? Which is basically a spiritual statement. Everything is energy. All is this one thing. So you can go apply whatever word you want to it, and it still kind of boils down to the same thing. And I think that Einstein put it in to mathematical terms but it's the same thing that the Buddha was talking about or that Christ was talking about or any of the other great spiritual teachers of throughout time so wow. okay so uh, maybe what we'll do now is have a uh, uh, saffron do uh, the second set she'll do an improvisational piece it'll be by saffron au bois and the band is TB Licky playing the tablas Sudam is uh, playing the, the zither and the sitar and DC stringers playing the harmonium and doing the vocals. And also, before I forget, we'll get into that in a second, but if anybody has any questions or wants any information about where Saffron's playing or any members of the band or where Stephen and Evan are going to be or about the book, Sanctuary, or, or workshops or how to reach anybody, please call me at Alan, 805-687-2053. That's Alan, 805-687-2053. Okay, whenever we're ready, Saffron and everybody.
Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Wow. So, if you're watching the show uh, anytime before, I guess, the middle of October 1999, Saffron's going to be playing, uh, I think, at the Catalina Jazz Festival coming up. So, if you want, again, call me or any information about Stephen, Evan, Saffron, anyone else. Uh, 805 687 2053. Okay, we're back on the set with Stephen and Evan. So, how did you decide to? to write this book. I mean, how did that expand your... Well, there are several reasons. Uh, there are some things happening in the world that made me feel I had to uh, be a little less cloistered. And Evan was very, very influential in persuading me that that was the case. I feel there's some problems in the world and I felt I could not afford, as a matter of conscience, to simply have my select clients, um, primarily in the entertainment industry, um, as you can see from the book. Mm -hmm. Now, and then, then we had a choice to write a book about subtle energy physics that nobody in the entire world would read, right? Or write a parable, a fictional got, theoretical that parable. got the message right. out. Yes, and. Uh, Evan did persuade me we should do that also, and uh, that meant no weekends for a year, but we did it. And that was the choice we made. I think we made the right choice. People are reading it. In fact, I understand we're now in the upper 1% of uh, Amazon. I don't know about this week, but recently we were. Yeah. We were w well inside the upper 1% of well, what's yeah. on Amazon, but you know. I don't know what that means exactly, but <laughs> <laughs> I bet you they sell a lot of books. So, I mean, if you're up there, I mean, you know, that's really fantastic. So that, I mean, that means is that the message you're putting out, people are interested in uh, and responding to. I mean, do you get like 
thousands of calls every week from all these people reading your book or mm. do they put it together that this is a healing modality for mm. me the book makes it quite clear that that is the mm -hmm. case mm -hmm. yeah, so and, and and there's a way to reach you in the book and yes, all that absolutely yes and and so the the number of calls are just there's they're increasing all the time we've had very right. good response and we look forward to more response too. so so i mean you can't do all i mean you you know unless you have like like those solar panels all over the desert, you can't have that many, you if know, what it, trays. If that's what it takes, and it may, that's what we'll have. That's what you'll try if to If it do. takes that, that's what we'll have, yes. Now, but you're also training other people in the techniques of, of Well, doing... right now, currently I'm not, because uh, I'm on this tour. And I, I will not entrust anyone else to teach this. I've taught a number of people, but for right now, it's suspended for that reason. And also, my research is, is lacking, and, I, and it's and it has and to be I, ongoing as far as I've your got, research. My research is what I care most about, really. And and how would you? You're just res research into energetic balancing, is yes? It? That's all I know about. And and that would be in terms of can more I, specifically. Can I point out something, for yeah, instance? Please. I know a lot of a lot of the balancing, a lot of the the imbalances that we find have the same name as diseases, for instance. And we specifically say that you know they're they're similar in name only. Any any correlation between your doctor's diagnosis and our our energetic evaluations would be a, a coincidence. But for instance, in addition to those, Steve has discovered many hundreds of other imbalances that really don't seem to be known outside of our work. So um, that and they would affect the human form in terms of being tired. They, they or, clearly do affect right. the, the but human no, form. we don't have a, a definitional name for it. It's just some sort of disharmony or, dis, or, well, or out of balance. Well, they, not exactly. For example, uh, one of the endorsements in the book was a, a man named J.R. John Roger. Mm -hmm. Now I found something that affected his eyes, and he had a problem with them, and it was not a known disease frequency. So I'm not interested in having hundreds of diseases named after me, mm -hmm. right? At all. So consequently, it became known as J.R. virus. That's the process. His response was, "Well, if anyone else has this problem, and they're on the train, they'll get better, right?" I said, "Absolutely, great." Now, another person whose name I can't mention, you would recognize it, uh, in the entertainment industry, said, I don't want a disease named after me. To which I say, it's yours. I found it in you. You, you said, got it. You got it, yeah. One of my closest friends, as a matter of fact. But yeah, there are many, many disease frequencies that have not been discovered. Now, now there's another... I but if you have something wrong with you... Right. I will find if it's a negative frequency. I will see. I will get a reading saying, "Disease frequency not in the database." In which case, there's going to be a disease named Alan. Wow! I can't wait for that. <laughs> no. no, actually, all the ones you found, they had names. I'm happy to report. <laughs> I wasn't the first. I got to name a planet after me. That's not a, a disease. <laughs> Right, so you follow the second school of thought there in terms of Steve's illustration, the don't name him after me school? No, I, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I got worse problems than whether a disease is named. After me, it's <laughs> kind of nice, you know, so I could live with that. Well, they're just frequencies right, anyway. I mean, yeah, so. I mean, if, if I identify with that, then I really got trouble anyhow. Yeah, so. So. And so, and do you have like an ego disease? Probably some of your friends could use some work on that. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> Are you speaking of me? No, I actually wasn't speaking of you in our little. But if you know, you know, is there some of the people in the, in the back of your book probably have some amount of ego imbalance? I would say. Actually, I think that they were all incredibly generous to put their names, allow their names to be used in this context because the work we're doing is pretty far out, and they were willing to take stake their reputation basically and put it on and put their reputation on the line for us. So they have very high integrity. So. When people like Bert Backrack or. Uh, Herb and Lonnie Alpert or Courtney Cox or any of them, they come to me in absolute confidence. And for me to ask them for an endorsement, and the kind of endorsements they wrote, is is humbling because, you know, I can't, I can't violate that confidence. Right. And they, volu they, and they volunteered to do right. it. So uh, I'm really grateful. Were there any people who turned you down the same way they asked you not to Absolutely, absolutely. Many people did.
And I respected that, and I did not. They wanted their privacy. It's theirs. Mm -hmm. Who am I to say you can't have your privacy? In this world, it's certainly harder and harder to come by, isn't it? So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So where do you see, see your your work, your play going? I mean, do you see it as... as now, the way I understand it now, now you don't even have to find out what's wrong with somebody. You can just put their picture and heal it. My play gone. I'm on this tour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play yeah. anymore. Uh, my work, there's no end. Well, I think his point was good, though, the idea that we don't have to test anymore. That was Alan was just getting to that, and that's that is the key to this work. I so, think. in other words, the picture or the, or, I mean, you, you wouldn't put me on the plate. <laughs> other people would like. You're to, a little too. big to fit on the plate. There's only about that, that much okay. distance between each one. Okay, so. so in other words, you'd want to picture the person and you right. put it on the plate. You don't care what they got. You're going to harmonize them. You're going to balance them. That's right. And they that's will it. force you to do it. Right. You will force, force me to do it. To do it. Yes. I'm a stubborn. No, I don't know about that. My parents really think so much. Well, we'll have to put you on the tray, and then we'll come see, back we'll at some time in the future okay, and see exactly. what kind of changes it's made. Right, you got to deal. You'll with have it. a different set. All that stuff. <laughs> right, right. What color you think it'll be? Right. I don't know. We'll have to see once you get the balance. So, I mean, do you see yourself? I mean, I mean you're not going to tour forever. You're going to stop it. No, I'm going to go back and do your research. I want to stop it very shortly. Yes, I. Uh, I felt there was a period of time that, as I said, in conscious, I had to give to this, and I'm doing it, and it'll be done shortly. Where's my work going? Well, probably most of the current work I've done, um, when I can, has to do with not disease frequencies, but anti-aging, for example, vitality, stamina. I mean, there's a very well-known musician playing right now who called me. He wants absolute magnetic dynamic quality when he's in concert and uh, I can have that frequency uh, transmitted to him and I do it whenever he's in concert so that's a particular arrangement I have with him that's, that's simple to do right now, do you he can't afford to be off when he's in a big concert so do, do you think it's healthy that you don't play no no, it's very unhealthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. No good, right? No, I resent it. <laughs> so, in other words, you're feeling like, I mean, it's it's disharmonious if you were to continue and not be able to play and not be able to... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's true for anybody on the tour. I'm sure it's true for Saffron. Um, I mean, you know, you start off, we were on the radio at 6 this morning or so, and had to work all day, and here we are. On television at night, we've got to catch an early, early, early morning flight to Phoenix. Be in Phoenix a few days, I get one day back to sit and play with my cat, who hates me these days. Right, because he's never yeah. there, right? I'm never there, yeah. <laughs> and then where are we? Uh, Carmel. Carmel. Right? Yeah, I don't, Carmel it's it's two, if it's Tuesday, we're in Belgium. You know. Yeah, just everywhere. So. But I mean, it is coming to an end. I mean, you. I mean, you're not scheduled out through like 2009, right? No. No, no, I'm going to burn my passport. Uh, <laughs> well, to go to Carmel and Phoenix, <laughs> you know, and my credit cards. Right. So, I mean, has this book been translated? I mean, do you see like the message expanding well, out? Actually, we are we are uh, negotiating for an Indian edition. Oh, that we printed good? in English oh, in yes. India. And we have been talking to somebody else about possibly a German translation. Um, well, and Tom will have to do a German imitation. Oh. I'm not as good on that. Uh, I do Indian pretty good at hillbilly. They right? want to do it. Uh, people want to do it in Spanish and in uh, French, Russian. So at this point, except for word of mouth, basically it's it's a United States phenomenon. No, it's people oh, no, all no, over no. the world. And just, and no. that's just from word of mouth. I've had, because... I have clients all over the world. And how did that come to be? That was word of mouth. Word of yes, mouth. Absolutely. People tell people who tell people. Oh, yeah, I remember I started to ask you, there was an older technique, or an, an older, uh, not an older person, he's dead now, he's as old as you get it that way, but uh, uh, the Rife machine, is that like a forerunner of what you're doing in some sense? Um, it's a totally different frequency than the frequencies I've developed, but Rife did monumental work. I, I borrowed from anyone I could, and there are a lot of uh, concepts developed by Rife that I did and 
I stand because there is a rife machine. There is a rife machine. You know, yes, yes. Where frequencies it's an entirely different set of frequencies. But you know, he did extraordinary work, and I stand on a lot of shoulders. So, I mean, we were talking earlier, and you're, you're starting to take your, your you, you are a pilot now. Right, so I mean, pilot, yeah. so I mean, it would be a lot easier if you could like just get in the plane and and go to these different places, but still now you're not really doing so that. So some of the distances involved, you know, it, private planes aren't always the best venue right. for those. So, but we do travel a lot, but hopefully we'll cut the travel schedule down. We have a lot of work to do to keep up with the demand, and a lot of it just has to be done at the office. At the so. office, so I mean, your healings take place at the office, more or less. Well, no, they take place wherever you guys are, wherever the people right. who are on the train. Well, do you are. carry? Yeah, do you carry the trays around with you? No, they're quite big and heavy. They weigh. <laughs> the, we probably have them. You know, I guess it's. If they're in the car, we probably have everybody coming down to the studio. We probably have about two thousand pounds of stuff, maybe more, doing the, the work right now. So wait, so the trays are in your office in Santa Monica. Right. So yeah. in other words, for you to do the healings. You have to be putting pictures on the tree. We have, we have staff who puts we have them a on. Staff right. that does that, but the healing does not take place in Santa Monica. Right, I understand. It takes place in you. Right, I understand. All right, well, I guess again we've done it. Uh, the show's winding down. You know, it's just been an extraordinary experience for everybody, I'm sure. Uh, again, any information on on Steve and Evan uh, uh, Saffron, eight zero five six eight seven two zero five three. Again, let me thank everybody who came tonight and everybody who watched tonight and all those people who have used their time and attention and energies to get us on in all the cities we've been getting on in the last probably six weeks we've gotten on in probably ten more cities and the calls and emails we get are just so encouraging and inspiring to us so again thank you good night god bless you and come again good night <laughs>